Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, I have another story for you which is based as usual on five random words generated by an online random word generator. It's kind of obvious really. Anyway, the five random words are as follows. And the story is called You Want It More Vibrant? I'm a plasterer, a drummer, and a failure. Well, in the eyes of my father, best friend, and ex-wife, respectively, that's what I am. In the eyes of my four-year-old son, Alex, I'm a superhero, a spy, and a giant. At the moment, I'm in plasterer mode, smoothing out a 900-square-foot feature wall in one of the fancy new apartments built in Brent, overlooking the Welsh Harp Reservoir. Lovely view, underground car park, gated and fenced off from the hoi polloi, I, Scots construction workers and thrash metal drummers like me. With all the frustrations I've suffered lately, I'm happy to have this massive white space to work with and to be almost alone to complete the task. I say almost as I've managed to sneak Alex in today to sit quietly in the corner playing iPad games, drawing or taking photos. He thinks himself quite the little Cartier Bresson. I bet you're surprised I know that reference. Hey, I'm a plasterer, not a moron. I do read books too, you know. Since COVID-19 descended to wreck all our lives, Alex's nursery's closed, and I can't get a babysitter until next week, when mum and dad return from their holiday in the Algarve. I thought Marcy would be available to take Alex this week, but apparently she's got plans too important to cancel for her own son. She works from home and is usually a good bet for an emergency drop-off, but recently I've seen her on Tinder, can you imagine seeing your own ex-wife pouting for hookups? And she's less amenable. So either I sack off this job and lose a week's pay, or it's bring your kid to work day. On a normal site that would be impossible, but all the hardcore building work is complete, so I managed to twist the shift supervisor's arm. Alex was happy to get a yellow hard hat to wear, and his dinosaur face mask doubles as a filter for whatever paint fumes are wafting in and out of the complex. I fill my hawk up with fresh paste, then climb the small stepladder to the third rung with my trowel at the ready. Apart from the occasional drill hole where electric fittings will be laid, the expanse is perfectly flat, the blockwork immaculate. I look down and see Alex sitting on a pail like Ur Willy, intent on his Minecraft masterpiece, like father, like son. He's no trouble at all. If anything, it's a challenge to wrench him from his digital building work to run around with me in the park. I hope he doesn't have Asperger's. The plaster goes on thick, then I smooth it in wider and wider arcs, placing my face close to the surface to check it's perfectly flat. Not too close, of course. Like most plasterers, I've briefly loaned my profile to more than one wall. The plaster is an off-white colour called Morning Mist, which has become a bit of a rhyming slang amongst the crew on this job. Let's all go and get morning mist. I'm halfway through the job and have ditched the ladder to work on the lower half of the wall. When I hear footsteps below me and someone says, oh, it's said in the manner of a polite person faced with a problem they're going to have to reluctantly deal with. I turn around and there's the foreman, Mr. Brenton, one of the client's representatives, whose name I forget, and my mate Sundeep, a Sikh electrician who started on site last week. They're all looking at Alex, still sitting in his corner, engrossed in the iPad. Sorry, um, that's my son Alex. I know he's not supposed to be here, I begin. I'm not allowed to finish. It's entirely against the regs, Brenton says. Only workers allowed on site. I try and laugh it off. I had him mixing up the formula, but his wee arms don't really have the heft. Brenton, the humorless bastard, doesn't crack a smile, though the others do. Instead, he turns to the client, a slim salt-and-pepper hipster in his early forties. The guy has a beard and ponytail combo. I'm really sorry, Mr. Kazmarski. This won't happen again. Mr. Baird, I want you off-site in 30 minutes. Take your child home, please. I still have a hawk full of plaster, and I'm tempted to see how Brenton looks wearing it. You can finish what you started, he adds, as if it's a concession. I couldn't get childcare, and I, I didn't want to let you down. I say more to myself than anyone else in the room. Alex is looking up from his game now, watching shyly, confused by the odd mood. 
An emotional calibration is taking place inside me as I let the rage subside. The client has turned away and is examining the plaster admiringly. He looks down at a sample booklet he's holding, showing the different finishes we have available. I thought it would be more vibrant, he muses. Brenton steps in oleaginous as ever. Wait until you see it with all the light fittings. We have some pretty wild colours next door for the show home. Would you like to see? The client nods and heads through to the unplastered apartment next door, which is being used as a storeroom for paint and plaster drop-offs this week. Sundeep remains in the doorway looking awkward. Jack, I'm sorry, I didn't know about Alex. I know, I reply, bundling my son into his duffel coat and putting his iPad away in his satchel. Sandeep makes to leave, turning for a final word. Pint in the grapes later? We'll be there at six. I shrug. That seems to suffice, and with a wry smile, Sandeep is gone. A couple of minutes later, I squint through the newly fitted windows, which still smell of putty and silicon. My throat feels swollen. It might be fumes, but then again, I'm prone to glandular problems. Swallowing, I spot Brenton and the client walking back across the car park towards the porter cabin offices. Alex tugs at my sleeve. Alex, I ask, would you like to make a painting? His eyes light up. I take him through to the storeroom apartment and we carry through some pots of paint. Deep cerulean blue, sunflower yellow, poppy red, mint green, lilac and sunset orange. I don't bother finding brushes or trays as I wrap Alex up in a makeshift apron of plastic sheeting and put safety glasses on him. I show him how to hold the base and handle of the smaller cans and hurl their contents onto the wall. I make the first splash, a huge grin of red like an arterial spray. Alex adds gobs of yellow as I throw horizontal lines of blue across the still wet plaster. By the time we leave, ten minutes later, it looks like Damien Hurst has had a mental breakdown in there. Alex giggles as I lick my finger and wipe a splash of orange from his forehead. Let's go and play football, I suggest, and Alex jumps up and down in a way that makes my heart melt. Marcy's really going to give me hell, but I really don't care. And the client did want it more vibrant, after all. I hope you enjoyed that little story. Um, do I need to say it as ever? Share, like, tell your friends, that sort of thing. And I will be back soon with another story. Bye-bye.